Hello everybody, it's Yasmin here. How are you doing? So I'm about to hop over to the Moonology Manifesting Challenge in about five minutes. Uh, and if you want to join in, you still can. Um, a lot of people are joining in and going, oh, but I've missed the first videos. That's fine. You just do what you, as Abraham Hicks always say, start where you are. So if you get in there, you won't get day one and day two now because we only leave them up for 48 hours. Uh, but if you do hop in, we are about to do day five, I think, and it's going to be amazing. It's just been amazing. So just search on uh, Moonology Manifesting Challenge um, and you'll find the group and you can join. What I really wanted to do right now, though, was I wanted to give you a... I said five minutes, probably going to be three minute explanation of why um, this coming new moon is going to be lucky for people who are Taurus rising, okay? Taurus rising. Just going to, oh, that's the wrong book. Just going to grab my book, my diary. Okay, so the new moon is coming on March 13th. Um, the new moon in Pisces and it's March the 13th no matter where you are in the world in London it's 10:21 a.m. Sydney 9:21 p.m. LA 2:21 a.m. New York 5:21 a.m. and it's going to be an amazing new moon because it's actually taking place in the sign of Pisces and it's going to be right near a Venus Neptune conjunction so hopefully it's going to be absolutely beautiful uh, as long as you haven't been kidding yourself about something um, but it's lucky for Taurus rising. Now, why is it lucky for Taurus rising people? I've actually got some new technology on my, uh, on my um, computer, which allows me to show you while I'm talking why each new moon is lucky for a particular sign. So here we go. <coughs> Stay tuned. The magic of technology. Ta-da. All right. So now what you're looking at is a chart. It's actually a solar fire chart, and I'm here, um, for right now where we are, okay? So right now the moon is at 28 degrees of Aquarius. Uh, but let's look at what's happening. We're, going, we're about to have... Um, we're about to have a new moon. So where is it? Here we go. Sorry, I thought I'd actually called this up already. This is going to be the new moon on March the 13th. It's going to be taking place in the sign of Pisces here. And there's a lovely Venus Neptune link, which is actually quite romantic and quite nice. Now, why is it lucky for um, Taurians? Why is it lucky for Taurians? Sorry, not Taurians, Taurus rising people. Because... Okay, if you are Taurus rising, just let me just, sorry, move this. So I just did this off the spur of the moment. I'll do a better video about this quite soon. But look here, that's the sign for Taurus. If you can see the little bull's head sign, there's Taurus. So if you're Taurus rising, that's what your chart looks like. It doesn't matter what sign you are, or what sign you are, if you're a Leo or a Virgo or an Aquarius or a Capricorn, doesn't matter. If you are Taurus rising, this is how your chart is laid out. And I'm always saying why it's so important to know your rising sign and read your rising sign is because your rising sign basically dictates how your chart plays out. So if I, I, if Taurus rules your first house, see your first house, then Gemini rules your second house. The sign of Cancer or Moon Child rules your third house, which is, you know, that's cash, that, that's how you come across in the world. That's cash, property, and possessions. That's communications, short trips, uh, amongst other things. That's fourth house, family, fifth house, fun, and all that. We go all around. Seventh house, love zone. Tenth house, work. Eleventh house, your lucky wishing zone, your lucky zone. It's the house of the thing wished for, okay? And so what we have when you have the new moon in your 11th house is basically a, a new moon, which is perfect for making wishes and setting intentions in your 11th house, which is the house of the thing wished for, which explains, because people always say, well, hang on a minute. If it's the new moon in Pisces, why is it lucky for Taurus rising people? Well, that is why, because it's your lucky new moon of the year taking place in your house of the thing wished for, okay? And uh, that is why we do our monthly webinar. So this month, it's Taurus Rising, the Written in the Stars webinar. It's your turn. 
And uh, what we'll do in the webinar, which is going to be on March the 14th, the day after the new moon, so we'll still be in the new moon phase. Uh, we will take a short tour around your chart so you can understand exactly what it means. We will have a look at the current transits and what it means that you've got Saturn and Jupiter in, in your 10th house at the moment, for example. You've got Chiron in your 12th house, Uranus in your first house, the disruptor planet. What does it all mean? I'll be explaining that. And we will also make some really powerful new moon wishes together. And if you're doing the Moonology Manifesting Challenge, you will get two, two goes at this because we're going to do them the day before as well. So I really encourage you, if you're Taurus rising, join the workshop. It's going to be amazing. And uh, yeah, so that basically solves the mystery question of why is... Uh, why is the new moon in Pisces um, a lucky wishing moon for Taurus rising people? Or, you know, why last month was the new moon in Aquarius a lucky wishing moon for Air Aries rising people? So on that note, I'm hopping off and going to the Moonology Manifesting Challenge. Join me if you'd like to. Don't be distressed because you won't get all the videos, but you can meet, we will meet you where you are. Abraham Hicks says, start where you are, and I agree with that. You're, whenever you join, you're meant to join. Whatever you find there, you're meant to find there. And what you'll find there is the most amazing bunch of empowered 99.9% .9 women, not like 1% of men, but I even don't even know. I think there's a couple of men in there. All right, lots of love. Have a beautiful day, and I'll speak to you later.